Welcome to the Big Blue Breakdown, the Game Balls and Gassers edition for the Giants Week 2 preseason game against the Houston Texans. Houston wins this one 28-10, and we will go over the Game Balls first. I'm Paul Dottino. All right, on offense, we're going to go to rookie wide receiver Malik Neighbors. Now, you remember the first round pick did not get any targets in the game against the Detroit Lions last week. Well, in this one, six targets, four catches, all right, very modest, but of course it was his acrobatic grab for 21 yards that really uh, kind of got people excited. It was a second and four from the Houston 38 late in the second quarter as the Giants were trying to drive for some late points in the half, and he made a twisting extended catch uh, against cornerback Chris Boyd down the right sideline was the kind of play that could really ignite a team. Certainly, his offensive teammates talked about it afterwards. And the kind of play that Neighbors hopes is going to be routine throughout the course of the season. Now, to his credit, you know, he only played 30 snaps, which was just about half of the game. He was actually more disappointed in himself for not making a juggling catch on a 25-yard pass earlier in the first quarter. Uh, there was a, a double team uh, between Derek Stingley and uh, Jimmy Ward on him, and he thought he should have been able to corral a juggling attempt at a, uh, a pass from Daniel Jones, but it was not to be. So he was really disappointed about that after the game and then did come back and make the acrobatic catch that we just spoke about. So for that, we will give neighbors the offensive game ball, although quite frankly... I don't know how many other candidates there'd really be. It was a rather quiet night offensively for the Giants. We mentioned uh, during the course of the game that Darius Slayton, who had the 44-yard catch on a go-route down the left sideline, set up the Giants' only touchdown of the day, a one-yard run up the middle where uh, Devin Singletary virtually went untouched. Other than that, the other offense was a 31-yard field goal by Graham Gano, so not much to speak about. Uh, I, I will tell you that the offensive line, at least the starting offensive line, as such as it was, uh, did a pretty solid job in pass protection in that they only gave up one sack. It was a strip sack late in the fourth quarter, which we will get to during a later part of this recording. But, uh, you know, I think Brian Dable, for the most part, how to be fairly pleased uh, with what the starting offensive line did in the first quarter. John Michael Schmitz did start at center. Uh, Luminor was at right tackle. Thomas was at left tackle. Uh, Stinney and Van Roten were the guards. And, you know, the one time, well, we'll talk about a little bit of pressure later on. It wasn't so much the offensive line as much as it was the tight end. But we'll get to that in the gasser segment. Okay, the defensive game ball for the Giants goes to defensive lineman Elijah Chapman. Now, it's really hard to, to ignore when you're talking about a 280-plus pound defensive lineman chasing down a running back. And that's exactly what Chapman did. He almost looked like a mini version of Dexter Lawrence who could make a similar eye-opening athletic type of play. So let's go back to the situation. Uh, Chapman only had two tackles in the game, by the way. But again, of course, this, this is a play that even though it didn't go down as a credited tackle, still was impressive. Uh, ten minutes left in the third quarter, second and nine for Houston from its own 10-yard line. And running back J.J. Taylor darts around the left side and scoots down the sideline. Now, he gets credit for an 18-yard gain only because he stepped out of bounds. But at the time, nobody was sure about that. They had to go to replay to confirm that he did touch the sideline. So as the play develops... Chapman is playing left defensive end for the Giants. He sheds his block, and as Taylor breaks the line of scrimmage and turns it upfield, there's Chapman in pursuit. All the way from the left side of the Giants' defense, 
he gets to the right side, to the sideline, and becomes the lone trailer of all the defensive players who chases down Taylor. That's right. Chased him down approximately 45 yards in what everyone thought might have still been a live play until he finally dragged him down out of bounds uh, at the Giants' 45-yard line. A very impressive piece of huddle by Elijah Chapman, who uh, you know just continues to uh, amaze people at the type of athleticism and the motor that he's got in addition to, uh, as what assistant uh, coach uh, Andre Patterson says, is incredible strength. So Chapman continues to make his mark as the Giants go further and further into training camp and the preseason. So for this, we are going to give uh, Elijah Chapman the defensive game ball for the Giants in this game. All right, um, we should mention that the Giants' first team defense had a really nice fourth down stop. Now, I know in a regular game, Houston would not have gone for the fourth down. They would have just kicked the field goal and gotten, gotten three points. But nonetheless, the Giants have made a habit now in the first two weeks of the preseason of coming up with uh, fourth down stops. In this one, after C.J. Stroud last year's NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, came out and started for the Texans, who had most of their starters in place. Um, he led them downfield on an 11-play, 59-yard drive. that took about six minutes. But they stalled once they got into the Giants' deep red zone inside the 10. In fact, there was a penalty involved, uh, offsetting. As it turned out, they ran five plays to cap off the drive inside the Giants' 10-yard line, and they couldn't get it in. The final play was a fourth and goal from the six, where Dexter Lawrence got his hands on a pass and deflected it harmlessly incomplete as it fell to the turf. And so that, uh, that deserves a little bit of an honorable mention. You know, again, we understand it's preseason, so they're going to go for a fourth and goal from the six. But Dexter Lawrence made a play. And so, uh, you know, for that, we still mention the fact that the Giants defense held on fourth down. Again, five plays inside their 10-yard line to cap off that series. On special teams, well, Gun Oshevsky, according to uh, Coach Brian Dable, is going to miss a little bit of time with an injury unspecified. So they used Isaiah McKenzie as their exclusive punt and kickoff return man in this game. McKenzie, with three kickoff returns for a 27 and a half yard average, including one long of over 30, and had one punt return of 12 yards. Unlike the Detroit game, which was played in sporadic rain when he had one muff, uh, this time, McKenzie handled everything flawlessly. And uh, so for that, we will give him the game ball on special teams. All right. Let's see. We can go now to the gassers. And, well, Brian Dable said it best at the beginning of his postgame press conference. You can't give the ball away five times and expect to win a game. So, what happened? Well, Daniel Jones, in his first action, nine months after a torn ACL, okay, first game action, let's specify, because he's been practicing, did dual practices with the Lions. In his first game action, it started out really rough. He was very rusty, threw two first quarter interceptions, then settled down, and then actually went on to play pretty well. But, initially responsible uh, for, or credited, I should say, with two interceptions of the Giants' five giveaways. Now, let's look at the first one, because the first one, as Coach Dable and Jones himself admitted, just can't do it. The second interception was more of a physical mistake, but let's talk about the first interception. In fact, we're going to address all five of the, the giveaways, because in general, 
it's the it's the offense because of the giveaways that gets the gasser uh, for this game you know J Jalen Petrie comes up with a pick six a six yard touchdown uh, return as uh, Jones was pressured it was the second uh, series of the game second and eight from uh, the Giants' own eight-yard line. Tight end Chris Manhurts was beat by defensive lineman, the veteran Derek Barnett. And Jones was getting pressured in the end zone. Tried to avoid it. Looked like he did a pump fake. And then uh, as the lineman was draped on his legs, uh, made an ill-advised throw to the left side, to the flat area, where rookie Theo Johnson was trying to run a route. It was a very poor decision and a very poor throw. Jones admitting that he should have thrown the ball at Johnson's feet so that it could not be intercepted. Instead, the ball sailed. Uh, it was picked off by Petrie, and then uh, he just took it into the end zone for an easy pick six. That cannot happen. The Giants know that. Jones knows that. Again, early in the game when he clearly showed heavy signs of rust on the next series first and 10 at the um, Houston 33 Jones to a uh, Hyatt and Derek Stingley comes up with an interception the ball was thrown too far to the inside Stingley had blanket coverage on Hyatt and um, picks the ball off inside the Texans five yard line nice job by the way by Hyatt to convert it to a defensive back and then tackle Stingley uh, inside the Houston one yard line. Uh, Giants unable to to defensively cause a safety after that, but the Texans were backed up inside their own one. They were able to just get it out a little bit and, uh, before they wound up giving up the ball. But bottom line, uh, two interceptions to start, and then uh, the Giants in the fourth quarter had three consecutive possessions where they lost the ball on fumbles. Uh, we will take a look. John Giles, uh, free agent, wide receiver, trying to make the team, had the ball stripped from him on a double team. He makes a catch down the right sideline. 20-yard reception uh, gets down to the Houston 25. So the Giants are now in scoring range, but he has the ball ripped away. And Houston uh, comes up with it. Cannot have that happen. So there's a guess there. Uh, Lorenzo Lingard, rookie, uh, not a rookie, but a, a um, yes, a newly signed running back who just came in this past week. Third and one for the Giants from their own 25. He goes up the middle, got the first down, shows extra effort, plows forward for a five-yard gain, and then has the ball stripped from him. And Houston recovers uh, as uh Lenard, Lingard was going to the ground. Initially, it was ruled a five-yard gain, and then on the replay review, uh, it was clear that the ball had been stripped out before Lingard hit the ground, and so Houston was awarded the possession. Then later on, again, next Giants offensive series, uh, there's a strip sack. Uh, this one was by Solomon Boyd, uh, blindside, on quarterback Tommy DeVito as he was winding up and getting ready to throw. Boyd knocking the ball out of his hands, and Houston recovers. So five giveaways by the Giants' offense. Uh, that, in general, just deserves a guesser. There's just no other way to describe it. It was not an overly productive day for that unit at all. All right, we go to the defensive guessers. And the Giants starters, well, they gave up that opening drive to Houston of 11 plays and 59 yards and 6 minutes before they stopped them in the deep red zone. And for most of the Giants starters, uh, that was it, because that was the only possession of the first quarter that Houston's offense had. Uh, a lot of the Giants starters played maybe another series, a couple of more plays. Nothing really happened eventful uh, there. So I'm not necessarily sure how you want to gauge that, but the Giants' backups uh, certainly did.
did not fare nearly as well as they did the previous week against Detroit. They gave up two touchdown drives of 12 plays for 74 yards and 11 plays for 77 yards. Now, again, a lot of these guys are deep in the depth chart, fellas, who, you know, there's a good chance many of them will not be here by the time opening day rolls around against the Minnesota Vikings. But in general, there was too much room for C.J. Stroud on the first drive as he was able to find a number of open receivers in the back seven. And then later on during the course of the game, uh, those holes were not cleared up or, or closed, I should say, as uh, the Giants' reserves uh, continued to pour into the game. Uh, they did not fare much better as uh, the Texans continued to find a lot of room. I think one of the things that, that bothered me just a bit, uh, and again, it's very difficult for any player to quickly come into a system in only a couple of days and make a play, but you know, just an example of something that you certainly don't want uh, safety Jonathan Sutherland a bit inside on a play uh, as um, Brooks wound up scooting into the end zone on a 15-yard touchdown uh, late in the uh, fourth quarter. Went around the left side of Houston offense. And that's a classic case. And, and, and Sutherland's not the only guy. I mean, there, there was certainly a lot of really nice blocks on the play by the Texans. But in all honesty, Sutherland lost contain. And if you lose containment against a running back who's taking it to the outside, well, that's what you get. An open lane down the sideline, and he will sprint in for the score. And uh, that's exactly what Brooks did as he took it uh, 15 yards uh, for the touchdown. Uh, we go to our special teams defensive, uh, or special teams gasser, I should say. It's uh, been a long couple of days, folks, so apologize. Maybe you want to give me a gasser for being a, a little bit fatigued right here. Um, you look at it, and it was kind of a nondescript day for special teams. Again, we talked about Isaiah McKenzie on his returns with Oshevsky being out. Gano with a 31-yard field goal. Jamie Gillen had, had a few punts. Um, we'll go here just because the guy is a very, very good special teams player. And it turned out, you know, to be something that, that you certainly don't want at the beginning of a game. Matthew Adams, linebacker, uh, gets called for holding at the point of attack on the Giants' opening kickoff return by Isaiah McKenzie. Uh, it was a 34-yard return, uh, but unfortunately, the flag for holding, and again, it was at the point of attack as McKenzie was slashing right, and Adams uh, grabbed the Houston uh, cover guy, and that allowed an open lane up the right side for McKenzie to break out. Uh, it was quick, but it was there, and uh, so that forced the Giants to start their opening drive at their own 26. Now, if that's in a regular season game, and you're saying to yourself, oh man, you know, you would have had some really nice field position for your first drive and make things really easy for your offense and maybe create an immediate spark. But the penalty marches them back 10 yards. That's the end of that. And now they got to start at their own 26. And, well, again, the Giants' offense just did not come out of the gate uh, very quickly in this one. They, they had quite a bit of trouble uh, in the beginning of this 28-10 loss, again, to the Houston Texans in Week 2 of the Giants' preseason schedule. All right, so the Giants are off on Sunday, and then they'll get back at it as they begin preparations for their preseason finale against the New York Jets coming up on Saturday. That is a Giants road game at MetLife Stadium. But, of course, they've got a joint practice against uh, the New York Jets coming up on Wednesday down in Florham Park, New Jersey, at Jets headquarters, this part of the reciprocal agreement between the Jets who came up to 
East Rutherford for one practice with the Giants last year. All right, so that's the Big Blue Breakdown Game Balls and Gassers edition for the Week 2 preseason matchup that the Giants had with the Houston Texans. Again, they fall 28-10. to I'm Paul Dottino. We will see you on Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, for a live edition of the Big Blue Breakdown as we discuss what happened during that dual practice session with the New York Jets. We'll talk to you then, everybody.